Hey, what's up? Steven here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And this, uh, ah, it's freezing out here, sorry. In this video, I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to use Backyard EOS. Some people have asked me for just basically how to run it. It's actually a really nice program, simple to use, especially if you're using a DSL camera for astrophotography. So tonight I'm imaging M45 and uh, so let me shut this off here first. I'll give you a basic run through. I mean, you hook up, basically click this, it'll say connect, connect your camera. This tab here takes you to the imaging tab where you can go and you select whether you're doing lights, darks, flats, bias. And this is just allow it for labeling of your files. So in this case, I'm shooting lights right now. Uh, camera support, just this is all pretty much the same. Target, you put your target in. That way it's labeled in the files. Filter, if you're using an H-alpha or O3 or even just a light pollution filter, you can put that in. Uh, like I said, it's just for file labeling. Delay, you basically, it's saying I want you to delay 30 seconds before you even start doing, running through these exposures. It gives you time to get away from your telescope so you're not bumping it and having bad exposures turn out, especially when they're like 20 minutes long, what I'll be doing here tonight. So basically you set it up how many exposures you want. Shutter for the most part, it's going to be bulb because we're going to be controlling our own how long we want to be and it's seconds. And then your, your ISO. And then you can put a pause between the next exposure. So you can set this up for like 20 exposures with one filter, five exposures of the next filter and quickly run out and change your filters or if you got a filter wheel that's what these are for you got an auto focuser you can connect it through this for the most part I don't have the filter wheel I have used my auto focuser on it it's kind of convenient it works and you just basically go into your settings and connect it so but use it if you need it don't have to you don't need it whatever and then uh, so anyways basically for my exposures though I'll just use this one set and I'll do like three sets of 20 whatever right now I have it set for five seconds with a real high ISO what I'm trying to do is align my framing basically with the night before so to do that use this mask option you click here you load one of your images from the night before it's got a convenient option for if you've done a meridian flip you can actually rotate your image which I actually ended up having to do tonight here so yeah, you go in here and you load your file from the night before. Mine's already loaded. As you can see, I'm... Oh, great, I lost it. <laughs> okay, let me reload that again. <laughs> let me use this light. It is a little bit slow when it comes to loading the images, especially after you've taken your exposure. So here you can actually turn the opacity down and try to line up your shots. So I'm kind of close. I just got to come down a bit and maybe to the side a bit. So I'll just nudge my scope using my rate controller. Seven, six, five, we'll six. Rate six. So four clicks on the downward button. And I'll do a quick preview. Just gonna do a five second exposure. Anytime. That's what I meant by it's kind of slow when it comes to loading the images, but for the most part, you're not sitting at your computer. So I went the wrong way. <laughs> up is down, down is up. Forgot a meridian flip, so let me try this again. <laughs> it's just hit and miss with this, so. This is why you crank up your ISO. You're not worried about noise. You just you want to see those stars. You want to align them. For your frame and focus, it will do like a live view. I'll show you that here after I get this all aligned. So, a little bit closer. I think that might have been too much. 
And you can imagine how much of a pain in the A this is when you're trying to use an HL for filter where your exposures are a minimal of 20 seconds just to see a couple stars, if that. Oh, I'm liking that. So I'll give it one click here, one click there. Yeah, I got it add using a gamepad to move your scope around. Very convenient. I'm just basically pushing the four arrows right now. Let's see what we got. Shouldn't have moved it that way. <laughs> All right, very close. It is a nice little feature, though, just to be able to line up your shots like that from the day before. Saves you from cropping off a lot of your images, right? So I am going to be picky on this. Rate seven, six, five. Bring it down and nudge it over. I already got seven hours worth of exposure time in on this, so being a little bit picky with it. Bam! I like that. So there we go. We're all lined up, ready to shoot again. So as I'll continue with Backyard EOS here, frame and focus, it's basically for when you want to uh, well, focus. So as you can see, well, as you can barely see, I don't even know if this is showing up, there are a few faint stars here. It does give you options of stacking your images, adjusting the brightness, so that kind of helps there. So you can do like a stack of four, really brightened it up. So, and then you double click, and it gives you the zoom box. And you put the zoom box around the star, and now we got it here, where it gives you a nice profile where you can adjust your focus, and you want to get this full width, half maximum number as low as possible. You can change it to your standard deviation, the hidden of. Actually, this is kind of new. Never used it, but hit no. I got my own mask for this, so oh, I see. It actually gives you lines to line up your behitnoff mask with. That's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm not using that right now. <laughs> so, see, I'm even learning stuff. I this is the new backyard EOS version, so I never. Hmm, interesting. And now I can't seem to get rid of that. There we go. So yeah, there's your star profile, and uh, I'm already pre-focused and everything, but if you had to do this, now you can actually just watch your profile, your focus number here, do your focusing. So that's a good plus. Planetary work, it basically records your live view off your camera for doing planetary work and saves it into an AVI file, which you can use in auto stack or your stacks. I myself think it's useless. I wouldn't even waste my time with it. You're better just to actually record the video with your camera and deal with it by converting your files to an AVI and then you run it through uh, virtual dub and split it up into frames and you'll actually get a bigger picture, higher resolution as well. So I might do a tutorial on how I pull that off, but if you are going to use this, this does work. Your pictures just don't expect them to be very great. And as for drift align, <laughs> Never used it. Why would I use an SLR for drift align when I have PhD here with my uh, guide camera? So, and then as for PhD, turn this on. <coughs> excuse me, and it allows uh, for it to communicate with PhD, and it'll dither for in between my frames. It'll actually move the image slightly just so you don't get pixelated looking stars. So I'm gonna go to tools. I'll select star. Looking good. 
I'll start guiding on her. Let that run for a bit, and then I'm going to start my imaging session. I'm already losing my star, apparently. What's going on? Lost my star. Okay, stop. Try this again. It wasn't recording before I hit loop, that's all it was, so. We'll be good now. Better be good now. Okay, yeah, we're good now. So yeah, there we go. So for this image here, I'm going to try to get in at least another hour. And I want them <clears throat> to be, sorry, 20 minute exposures. So that's 1200 seconds. And I'm cranking my ISO down to 200. It seems kind of weird to be running at such a low ISO for this, but I'm just doing it because I can. <laughs> Um, I've been practicing trying to get my align, my mount all aligned and uh, polar aligned properly and I've got it really close. I'm going to be doing narrow band here so I want to be playing with these longer exposures. So in order to do that in the city I got to run with a really low ISO. So that is about it. All I'd have to do is hit start capture. Loop, it'll basically run through all these, go back, run through them all again, go back and it'll just continue in looping that. So I'm going to do this. It's going to take a little over an hour. When you click Start Capture, actually, it tells you the time when it's going to be done. So 4.14 in the morning. So I'm going to go set my alarm and wake up at 4.14 and come out here and shoot some flats and some darks. And I'll be done for the night and I'll have an hour's worth of exposure squeezed in. Up and ready for work the next day. <laughs> so there you go. And uh, hope this cleared some stuff up for you. And enjoy using it it's a great program it was worth every penny so thanks for watching